part of being an entrepreneur, you need a measure of stupidity. Back to the 2005 story, um, what, what drove me more at that time um, was the desire to, 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 to do something here yeah, on my own. Uh, I didn't price too much of those values into my mind. Those were not the things that occupied me. What occupied me the most was um, me going out there and do the things that I wanted to do. And when I look back, I, I mean, I, I kept much of the material that uh, was produced in, in, in those elementary years, including the logo <laughs> of the command. No one has ever seen it, by the way. <laughs> the first, first logo, you know. I mean, it looks so amateur, so stupid. Mm. The, the proposals had bad English, you know, bad grammar. The Ndiso Consulting Group is an authentically African and globally wide management consulting firm which seeks to empower institutions that enable Africa's development. It has been 17 years of impact where our work has gone beyond the boardroom into the homes of South Africans and Africans at large. We provide evidence-based solutions to complex management problems and are subject matter experts in strategy, governance, organizational turnaround, revenue enhancement, and industrialization consulting. Visit ndisoconsulting.co.za for more information. Ndiso Consulting Group. Truth. Trust. Results. Good day and welcome to the Indiso Impact Podcast. My name is Oliver Dixon and I am your host. Each week on the podcast, we will bring you expert insights from thought leaders within the Indiso Group on how to drive impact. Today, we begin with the group executive of Indiso, Alex Mabunda. Alex recently wrote an in-depth column on the unemployment crisis in South Africa. I paid him a visit to have a conversation about this to explore how we can solve the unemployment crisis in South Africa. But before we get to the meat of the conversation, I asked Alex what Indiso is and what it does. Indiso Consulting uh, Group um, is a company that was born in 2005 uh, as a consulting firm. I had the privilege of starting the firm um, back then. And yeah, 17 years later, we're here uh, from a small company running, you know, um, in, in my lounge uh, when I uh, lived in Box back then to a company with six branches uh, across South Africa in, in excess of um, 200 um, employees and a company that's now making impact, you know, um, in the development of the country, as you know, the work that we're doing in, in, in local government, uh, where we work with uh, some of the big cities, uh, among them the capital city, um, the city of Tuane for the past eight years, um, the likes of the city of Jobek, um, the city of Eguruleni, uh, and virtually every other municipality in, in Gauteng and of course uh, a whole lot of municipalities uh, in um, across South Africa. But of course Indiso Consulting is not a municipal revenue company as many people know us for. Mm -hmm. That's just but part of the work that we do. Um, we have three subsidiaries and the revenue work is basically done under our Indiso Revenue Consulting subsidiary. We also have NDs or business consulting subsidiary, as well as NDs or industrialization consulting. And with industrialization consulting, we do something very exciting there, where we uh, help geographers, whether it's local municipalities or regional municipalities, or even provinces for that matter, um, develop economic development strategies, um, as well as infrastructure planning in, in those geographers. Uh, and finally, developing industrial scale projects, all of which combined, obviously, you know, um, facilitates uh, economic development in, in those places. Um, you will know that on the revenue consulting side, we help uh, mainly local government and, and utilities to optimize their income, which gives them uh, better borrowing power, uh, which in turn allows them to fund um, their infrastructure programs 
and of course that's the basis you know that you can get business mm. lodging into those uh, spaces and and you see economic development um, and the business consulting side is really about creating efficiencies and effectiveness uh, of organizations and we work with a lot of public sector organizations um, whether it's to assist them with processing you know whatever service delivery mandates uh, effectively cost effectively speedily um, and so forth so ultimately and and true to our um, mission as a, as a firm where we empower um, in inverted commas institutions that enable Africa's development and if you look at those three value propositions you know helping cities uh, optimize their income, helping geographers plan uh, uh, economic development, and also helping, pu helping public institutions work effectively. That uh, combined, um, you know, lend itself to our mission, which is to mm -hmm. enable, um, or rather empowering the institutions that enable Africa's development. So that's what this consulting is about. You, you mentioned impact. What does that mean to you? Of course, um, you know, with all of those things that I've just described now, yeah. you know, uh, economic development, you know, uh, lend itself to um, job creation. Um, it it lends itself into economic growth. Um, it it lends itself into you know reducing poverty uh, in terms of uh, UN Millennium Development uh, Goals. Um, and basically, you know, create that environment uh, that is good for our children to grow into, you know, where there's prosperity, there's security, you know, um, uh, the state is working and is working um, effectively. And, and that's the sort of impact that, uh, you know, every day when we wake up, uh, every day, so uh, employee uh, or every atom, as we refer to our employees, you know, uh, is motivated to go and create that impact. The ever-growing unemployment crisis of South Africa is one that plagues the economic fortunes of millions of South Africans. With the narrow definition of unemployment, one in every three South Africans are unemployed. With the expanded definition of unemployment in South Africa, nearly half of South Africans are unemployed. For young people, the number is even more scarier, with more than two-thirds of young people in South Africa sitting at home without a job, without an income, and with very little prospects of employment lying ahead. How we define the problem matters, but also how we diagnose the problem matters. Alex Mabunda wrote a column in News 24 explaining some of his ideas around how to solve the unemployment crisis. But before we get to the solution, we have to start with the diagnosis. And that is where I begin my conversation with Alex Mabunda. I asked him, how does he diagnose the unemployment crisis in South Africa? Look, of course, that's probably the most popular question, right? Uh, and, and I would imagine that this, the answer to this question, or the, for this question, we have as many answers as the different people that uh, you ask. Um, and of course, there's a combination of factors um, that finds us as a country, you know, uh, being in this situation where uh, there's lack of uh, jobs. Um, uh, among others, that as aspects I've spoken about is that uh, you know we don't have the right skills, for example. Um, you know that the economy is looking for. Um, we have had um, people talking about the concentration of of, of of wealth. I mean, I just had one uh, young entrepreneur um, saying that uh, you know a billion rand in a conglomerate has no meaning. An extra billion in the conglomerate has no much meaning than what it will do in 20 small uh, firms, mm. for example. So, but but those are the things that explain the problem. My, my, my um, take in this uh, subject, it's more about what we can do, um, you know, to to, to solve problem the, the problem. And and my line is really about. You know, encouraging young people out there to, instead of wallowing into, um, you know, uh, the um, lamentations of just how much there are no jobs out there, uh, rather for them to appreciate 
that they themselves uh, are potentially the job creators. Um, you know, they um, can leverage whatever it is that society is experiencing uh, as challenges to create solutions that will then translate into opportunities um, for business which would in turn obviously you know create um, job opportunities and if we do that in a large enough scale uh, we may find that all these cries about how the private sector when i say the private sector i mean the dominant players in the in the private sector the big conglomerate are not creating jobs how the state um, is not creating jobs because neither of those two, in my view, uh, are a panacea uh, in any way to, to job creation. Um, you, you will get more impact on job creation if and when, you know, we make it our business. And, and it's not really about saying I'm out there to create jobs. Rather, it's people realizing, you know, their gift and their potential to go out there and solve societal problems. The barriers in these undertakings, uh, notwithstanding, um, but of course you will know that uh, entrepreneurship and, and one popular Jack Ma uh, says mm. it well to say, once the conditions are favorable, um, it means the opportunity is gone. So the more daunting uh, it looks, uh, the more <laughs> opportunity exists. Absolutely. So, uh, look, I, I, you mentioned that it, it, this needs to happen at a large scale and it will really solve the problem. So, before we get to the question around how do we uh, create the critical mass of um, small businesses becoming uh, employers, why is it that so few South Africans start and see through businesses? You know, those who, the few who do start, many of them fail and those businesses never see the light of day beyond infancy. So, so, and you mentioned notwithstanding the barriers, those barriers obviously create opportunity, but those barriers also create ex uh, barriers to excess, uh, whether it be markets, capital, um, institutional support, regulatory support, whatever the case may be, those barriers do exist. Why is it that so few businesses uh, are started in this country? Um, is, are young people here just despondent? Are we not motivated enough? What's the issue? Yeah. Look, and, and it, look, it, it, it comes down to, 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 to saying that um, if, if you listen to any successful entrepreneur out there, uh, you know, uh, whether it's in Mark Zuckerberg, okay, we'll always talk about the, the money coming from certain sectors of that society to support those kind of guys. Um, but if, if, if you hear a story of any entrepreneur um, that is successful, uh, there's one trait that is common, and that's failure. Mm. You know, so how we should interpret failure in 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 starting uh, a business or in entrepreneurship? It should never be a negative uh, energy, right? Because it's it's part of the ingredient. Mm. You know, it's, it's part of the ingredients rather, and. Um, and so indeed, um, what's not going to happen is a situation where, uh, and back to the Jack Ma story, it's a situation whereby every person, every young person starts a business and every business is very successful. Um, that's not going to um, happen um, because that's not how business mm. uh, works, you know. Uh, so we need to teach our um, young entrepreneurs to understand, and not just young entrepreneurs, everyone who, mm. you know, I mean, I, I know colleagues and friends and relatives, some who have left uh, great corporate careers um, wanting to venture into business. And a couple of years later, they are back looking for a job. Others lost their jobs uh, because of the pandemic and other economic circumstances in those places that they worked um, and they went to the job market and, and, and they struggled, you know. So, but again, as I say, it, it comes down to resilience. Um, I've just been reading something very interesting in the last couple of days 
uh, about the, the hedgehog uh, fox conundrum, right? Uh, you know, a hedgehog, uh, once it points to an, a target, you know, it buries its head and runs as fast as possible mm. towards that target. It, it won't change course, right? Um, bit of a stupid way of doing things, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the same time, that's exactly how you succeed in, 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 in life, especially in, in entrepreneurship and, and, and business. Um, you, you, you need to be focused and you need to be driven. You need to chase and you need to chase as hard as it Sorry, can we, practically we, be We done. use this word resilience all the time, but I don't think we stop for a moment to think about what it means and looks like. Mm. Um, and I want us to do that right now. So. Um, I'm sorry for personalizing this to you. Yeah. Uh, 2005, you leave your corporate job. You decide, I'm going to start this organization. Um, you look at the landscape and you're like, yeah, but all these uh, massive multinational consulting companies that have uh, sophisticated tools to offer institutions and, and um, have these long-standing relationships with these institutions we're trying to do business with, where it be uh, local government, national government, private sector, whatever the case may be, um, and you decide nonetheless to enter that space, um, given how perhaps it may have looked saturated to you at that point, or maybe not, perhaps it looked highly competitive to you to a point where um, you know the barriers of entry are even higher because to overcome uh, those advantages they the big the big players and the existing players have is a is a mammoth task. You then need that piece of resilience. And resilience is not something you buy from shop, right? You, mm, you, mm, you, mm. you build that mental dexterity, or you, or you either have it or don't. What describe to me what that resilience looks like in in, in a practical sense, but how you also mentally process it. Mm. Look, that, that's a that, that's a very good and, and important question. Uh, in, in, in this discussion, um, and, and if I look back, uh, just to indulge you on, on my personal experience, um, you know, I, I argued in, in one um, Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business uh, uh, program uh, class uh, that part of being an entrepreneur, you need a measure of stupidity, right? Because and and. And sort of to mumble jumble my answer. When you go back to the fox mm. and the hedgehog story, so a fox on the other end, I didn't talk about it. A fox is sly, right? It, it, yes. It changes its move, its, its movement, um, and and that whole thing was about saying you need to be a fox and a hedgehog at the same time, right? You need to know when to where your fox at, and you need to know where to 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 where your 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 hedgehog. Uh, um, Head. So back to the 2005 story. Um, what, what drove me more at that time um, was the desire to 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 do something, you know, on my own. Uh, I didn't price too much of those barriers into my mind. Those were not the things that occupied me. What occupied me the most was um, me going out there and do the things that I wanted to do. And when I look back, uh, I mean, I, I kept much of the material that uh, was produced in, in, in those elementary years, including the logo uh, <laughs> of the company. No one has ever seen it, by the way. Uh, <laughs> the, the first, first logo, you know. I mean, it looks so amateur, so stupid. Mm. The, the proposals had bad English, you know, bad grammar, you know. It was just bad, mm. right? Um, but guess what? You know, you learn from these things, and over time, you know, you keep improving. You keep improving, and 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 of course, the 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 gasoline that keeps you going is this desire. So, and and I'll just pop that and just talk about another um, content that I saw on entrepreneurship, where this guy says, you know. Um, as an entrepreneur, you don't uh, create a fallback position, right? Because if you create a fallback position, hey, you lay your bed. Guess what, chap? You wanna sleep on that bed? Mm -hmm. If you if if you organize yourself around fallback positions, you will always fall back. But this guy was saying, 
entrepreneurs don't have, don't need fallback positions, and they know that because every time they fall, they know they'll just get up and go. So that's the hedgehog, mm. right? This thing just goes; it doesn't calculate too many things, right? So, so, so we need a lot of that in our young, and I'll speak to the young because that's what makes sense, you know. And aspiring entrepreneurs, right? Have that hedgehog mentality too. Just want to go for it. Mm. You know, bad as you may be, you know, just go for it. Just keep going. Just keep going. Right? And this is where now, when, when you do that, this is where now the universe starts to break up, you know, and, you know, uh, the pebbles spread apart and you can start to see the, the gems mm. and start to pick them. You know, and, and move. Now, the last anecdotal uh, example I want to talk to, I'm, I'm reading a book now. Um, it's a biography of um, uh, the late actor, Sidney Poitier. Oh, fantastic, fantastic yes. actor. Uh, I think the title is uh, The Major of a Bad. Mm. Great, great, great yes. title. I mean, <laughs> this guy, I, mean, I love that. Movie. My wife was just <laughs> thinking, what's this guy? What's it? Because I was reading this book and he talks about his first gig. Right, um, and he says, you know, I did so bad <laughs> at this thing. You know, I was skipping the lines, I was missing the cues. Mm. You know, that that play was was in theater. That, that play was bad. I said, I, I did it. I did so bad <laughs> that after the play, I just used an escape route <laughs> and never faced it. <laughs> this yeah. yeah. And he says, but then the next day when critics wrote about this thing. Of course, they confirmed that it was such a bad production. But in there, they said, hey, but this guy, right, he brings something fresh into... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you understand this, this whole thing? It's, it's really about just go for it, man. Yeah. Don't, don't look at yourself. Don't look at your tie and your shirt and your shoes and, you know, your nails and... No, just go for it. Yeah. Let's, let's speak about... I, what it takes to just go for it and you have an answer to that but before we do that there are about like I mean these quarterly reports by Stats SA shock us every time they come out and they really shouldn't at this stage um, but 12 million nearly 12 million South Africans are unemployed how many business realistically do you think we need to be able to create to say just dent half of that number right because not every business that's going to start is going to employ 200 people in 15 years Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not every not every business will have that journey. Some will stick to a, a five person movement, a a, a ten person organization. Uh, is there a model that you think about what the average business size in South Africa would look like? What the easiest way to get there is, and how many of those we need to be able to say at critical mass, this is how we can slash employment unemployment in half. Yeah, and again, that's another I think uh, a very good question because. You know, exactly that. I mean, 12 million. Uh, and you, you try to think about, you know, how many should Standard Bank take? Yeah. How many should Anglo-American take? How many should the government take? It, it just won't work. But think about it this way. So if out of the 12 million, um, one in three or even one in five, right? Yeah. Could go and start a small business. Because I can tell you, even if you start a business, uh, um, you know, and just stand there by the road, you have at least one employee. It's yourself. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you've already taken us. yourself out of that statistic. Yeah. Then, once people like your Maguinha, right, now you need to balance between going to buy the flower, and I'm not saying people must go and buy Maguinha to, 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 yeah, to, to create jobs just as much as I'm not saying they shouldn't. Yeah. And, um, you know, now, once it becomes a bit popular, now you need to go and buy flour and buy the oil, but at the same time, the customers want to buy. Suddenly, you have to bring your little cousin, you know, to say, okay, you may understand while I go buy the stock. Yes. That's job number two. Yes. Right. 
So in that 12 million, if you could have one in five, one in three. So that's, that's what, two and a half million people saying, yes. I started business and I employed two other people. That's what, six, eight million people got it? Yeah, if it had nothing up. All we need to do as a state and the big conglomerates, right, is to find a way to support this ecosystem of small businesses. That's what we can add. And, and, and in my mind, that support is it's not and should not be the precondition for this two, for these two and a half million young people, uh, because it's mostly young people who are out mm-hmm. of work, right? And to, to start these businesses. But I'm saying that, you know, if we are embarrassed enough as the government, uh, as the corporate, right, to see these people, um, you know, sinking into poverty and, and, and joblessness, uh, the least that we'll just need to do is to recognize the work of the two and a half million people and say, what can we do to support? But as I said, and I must emphasize this point, but that should not be the precondition for these two and a half million people to get out there and, 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 and start something. In his News 24 column, Alex makes the argument that for anyone to start a successful business, they need two things, the ability to read and write, and one specialization that allows them to solve a particular problem. This is what he means by that. So, of course, you know, the, we, we live in a, I would say, quasi and very close to a perfect knowledge economy, right? And so being able to read and write is, is very important. Mm. Uh, knowing how the world works on certain aspects is very important, whether it's in agriculture or if, if, if I go to my article, uh, you know, information technology, energy, whatever the case may be, engineering, right? Um, so unfortunately, you know, those things become important. Um, and, and my argument, and, and when I wrote that article, I had had a, a chat with my, uh, one of my daughters, um, who is finishing uh, media studies, uh, in the next year and a bit. And I said to her, girl, you don't want to sit here and wait for that day when they knock that little stick on your head, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then that's where you start to wake up and dust off your certificate and get into a text, you know, and say, I'm going to look for a job. It just doesn't work that way, Mm -hmm. right? Now you're doing your uh, penultimate uh, year, and surely these people are teaching you something. Whatever they're teaching you, why don't you take it and start playing around with it? So we came down to an idea of her starting a podcast Mm -hmm. or some, yeah, podcast or videos, YouTube videos, something like that, but basically creating some content that she can share. And I said, you know what, you're still very young, so you're allowed to make mistakes, even if your channel is the most amateurish channel. But if you just put your head on that and start doing that, that already creates, you know, huge capital Mm. for you to the extent that even if you don't end up employing yourself and others in your uh, channel, someone who is established and is looking for talent might just see that and think, hmm, you know, I want to work with this young person. Yeah. Right. But what you mustn't do, don't go all the way to the end and then write your final exam and then go to that notice board and say, oh, I passed. And then think, okay, so what's next? Oh, now I need a job. You, You can't be that disengaged from reality. Right. And that got me thinking. So to the, to, to your question, um, I meant exactly that, that uh, whatever you know about your subject, think about what you can do. Don't worry about how good you are in, 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 in those things. Don't worry about how well um, organized are the market opportunities in, 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 in whatever that you, you want to do. Just, just start something. Do something. Mm. Do something. So, you know? so many, uh, the problem might be that many young people don't have that uh, knowledge specialization in any sort of field because most South Africans don't have a post-matric education you mm-hmm. know and, and, mm-hmm. and 
uh, unemployment among graduates is far lower than unemployment amongst mm. Uh, mm. matriculants or, or, or people who don't have a matric certificate. Right? And so really, and, and this is where I want to bring it, during the Tabo Mbeki era, for instance, mm. uh, the answer to this joblessness question was always, no, we need to develop skills in the country because we don't have people who have employable skills. Right? Um, do you think that answer was correct at the time? Because you started your business in the middle of the Mbeki era. Um, do you think the answer was right at that time? Do you think that answer still applies now that we don't have employable young people? And if you don't have employable young people, you can't realistically expect them to succeed at starting a business. Yeah, maybe let's start with this question of the profile of joblessness in, in the country. So uh, what you're finding, so, so it is true that, um, you know, if, if you have a university degree, um, you know, and, and you got your degree from VETS uh, and UCT, uh, you have got, you know, if, if I was to create a, 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 an employability index, you're right, you've got a very high employability mm. index. And then if you got your degree from, uh, look, I don't want to, to <laughs> um, put, put, put things next to university brands, but it's, so it goes down. Yeah. You know, uh, down to Mabunda University, somewhere in a corner of the world. Uh, maybe your employability index is not uh, so great, right? And, and, and so it goes. Um, but what, what's happening is that uh, you're beginning to see a lot of young people with uh, post metric qualifications, like I would say a critical mass mm -hmm. for that matter, you know, who don't have employment. And if, if you start with those, Right and get them into this mode of just wanting to use whatever they've learned, and it, it will make a, a huge difference. Then indeed you have a cohort of uh, young people who you know didn't see uh, post metric um, education. Um, some have not even uh, gotten into uh, metric, right? Mm. Um, but if you now just look at you know, this whole gospel of saying, you know what, Famba Bagama Guinea, right? Mm. Don't just go into a taxi to another and factory to the next, right? Look mm. around you and realize who your neighbors, if they want to buy Maguena, they have to walk to the other side of the of the village or the other side of the you know, start with those small little things because <laughs> The truth is, the, the true ingredients of starting a business is not even maybe that university education or you know, post metric education, right? It's uh, if, if you have all your limbs and your senses, uh, of which most of us are lucky to, to have that, um, uh, you have the minimal uh, requirement, right? Uh, I see, especially where I come from in the village. Uh, most of the successful business guys are guys who didn't go to school, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah they, they sell alcohol, um, you know, they, they sell bricks, they, they do all sorts of things. But what is uh, common among them? They're driven, right? So maybe as the state and powers that be, another thing that we can do is to say, how do we knock into the head of every South African, especially the young ones that are still coming uh, up um, the ranks, um, to say, how, how do we inculcate in their mind this whole idea of a hedgehog, you know, getting out there and just do it uh, without judging yourself uh, in terms of what you do, you know, a sense of initiative. I've just been working on excuse me, uh, on something it's a community related uh, matter and it needed a lot of hands you know um, and we gathered some hands and when I say hands I, I'm being figurative but we gathered some hands um, and we started working you know and along the way I realized that uh, I laid the bed and it means it seems like I would have to uh, sleep on this bed because you gather these hands and ultimately you realize that um, 
for some reason, you know, uh, and I don't know what we spend our time on as 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 people, or should I say, as black people, because this is, we are the subject matter in in, in this context, right? Uh, you start to see some attrition, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if if we're moving bricks from one end uh, of the street to the other, you know, there's twenty of us moving the bricks. Suddenly there's about fifteen. Suddenly there's about ten. You know, before you know it, there's about three, four of you, right? So, and I said then to one of the partners, I said, you know what? It looks like there are very few people that you can take to a war, mm. right? So, for some reason, you know, people find it hard to to, to really commit uh, to to things, and and I think remember we, we are competing with the whole world in this whole thing. Right. What's the issue? Why. Do we need a culture shift? It's, it's absolutely a culture issue. There's definitely a serious, serious culture issue because where we are in the country, you know, we've allowed this mentality that says it's easy to get into riches, right? Mm. And with this issue of politics and branches and quotations and all of those things, right? Um, and of course, tenders indeed. You know, that has perpetuated that whole thing. You know, you have a pandemic, a guy who used to uh, ride a taxi within three months has got a tender worth of hundreds of millions and they are buying cars. And, you know, all of that thing is contaminating, you know, that which we require among our people Mm. to say, uh, you know, good things are a product of hard work. Unfortunately, that one barrier, sorry, right? We can't help it. It's, it's, it is what it is, right? Um, you know, the successful nations, uh, and, and, and one of my most successful nations is not China, uh, but it's Americans. You know, Americans, uh, they look, well, I hope I won't be <laughs> prosecuted for this. But from the surface, they look very simplistic, right? But those guys, damn, they put their time to the things that they want to do. That's why they're very successful in arts, mm. right? Uh, yes, we can complain all we want to say we don't support South African artists, but if the product is not where it's supposed to be, you know, you, you will struggle to, mm. to grow that uh, industry and so forth. So, Putting hard work, it's unfortunately a precondition uh, for all of those things. But in my mind, um, that was supposed to be the simplest. The other day we were coming from a a strategic review session. It was a Saturday, so I called my sister and I explained to her, we we went away on a Friday with the team and worked into the night on Friday and the whole of Saturday morning. And and she just cuts and says, Oh man, you work so hard, you know. You work so hard, you know, and you'll be rewarded for this. Then I laugh, I'm like, my sister, so what else would I be doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was in my mind like it's 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 a no brainer. Yeah. So what? Was I supposed to be out there partying or drinking yeah. or oh, what what else could I be doing with my time if I'm not working? Mm. You see. So so, so we need that culture shift. We need to sell to people. And that's why, in my mind, I'm thinking, hedgehog, don't judge yourself, keep going, because I'm assuming that the other bit, which is to say, put on the hard work, <laughs> that should be self-explanatory. That should be yes. so obvious. Yes, absolutely. Alex, um, thank you so much, man. There's so much more I want us to discuss around institutional support for for uh, because you spoke earlier that it government and corporates need to come together and really support small businesses and ask them if this person shows the initiative what can we do to help them and i want us to speak about the tools um that 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 makes up a successful support system you know and but but i don't want to have this conversation for too long maybe you should come back at another time onto the podcast i'm looking forward in the rest of the series to speak to some of some of your colleagues here who do amazing work in the various uh, specializations that they work in. Uh, you'll obviously be a listener of the podcast as well. 
<clears throat> excuse me you'll obviously be a listener of the podcast as well what are you looking forward to hearing from your colleagues on the series yeah so I'm, I'm very excited about um, you know this initiative that our marketing team has put together to um, also put our ideas you know uh, into tape uh, so to speak uh, because indeed you know we are a firm of ideas uh, we are when my, my, my kids ask me, Dad, what do you do? I tell them, we get paid for thinking. <laughs> that, 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 that's what we do. Mm. And so this is a great opportunity to, to, to lay down some of our thoughts. So I'm looking forward to um, a whole range of, of podcasts, uh, some of them focusing on different subject matters um, uh, that we, we, we work in. So you will hear you know, uh, content around uh, revenue management, enhancement, maybe specific topics in that regard, you know. Um, you will hear content around uh, of organizational effectiveness, uh, specific topics in, in that regard. Uh, and of course, you will hear content around, you know, um, economic planning, infrastructure planning, industrial yeah. uh, programs, um, but we also want to share with the world out there, you know, uh, the more, um, what is the word? Um, yeah, okay, maybe for a look of a better word, but you know, uh, topics around leadership, uh, topics around entrepreneurship like we're doing yeah. now, you know, um, and, and, and really, Topics around our outlook, you know, of things out there in the country. Yeah. You know, where we are, where we're going, uh, what sort of improvements uh, we can make. So you could almost expect a sort of a 360, you know, view um, of topics uh, and us really, you know, um, sharing with the world um, what we see. Uh, is the contribution uh, that we can make. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alex, thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. That's Alex Papunda, the crew chief executive of Indiso. Thank you so much to you for listening to the Indiso Impact Podcast. Visit our website at indisoconsulting.co.za for more episodes.